Our first caller is John from California. What's up, John? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, so um, I have a couple of questions centered around the central nervous system and, and kind of still making progress in terms of strength and aesthetics without overtaxing the CNS. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if that's actually possible, uh, especially in terms of maintaining compound lifts. But in terms of context, uh, I lifted bodybuilder style pretty consistently uh, since high school. Um, I picked up rock climbing about a year ago. And I'm in my mid-30s now, so I'm really finding it difficult trying to balance training for climbing and kind of maintaining that physique and that volume um, and still pushing like the bigger lifts, like at least the big three. Uh, I've been pulling back resistance training for the last year, uh, trying to find a better balance between climbing, training for climbing, and actual lifting. Um, my theory is it's CNS rather than like muscular fatigue or tendon or ligament fatigue. So the question or the biggest question I have for you is, is there a way to improve strength or aesthetics without overtaxing the CNS? And I'm thinking of maybe doing like a big foundation day with the big three um, and then trigger sessions the other six days. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of just trying to figure out how to program around how, four days of climbing. Okay, it's four days of climbing. I was yeah. going to ask how many, how often. That's we're a good question. So and, four days, and uh, I'm assuming at least an hour or longer. You're climbing for, uh, probably ninety minutes, and then I'm I'm calling it climbing, but there's also training for climbing, uh, things like that. I'm calling those four days climbing days, but some of it is just mm -hmm. like pull ups with, I mean, heavy weight pull ups on on Olympic rings, stuff like that. Cool. So those are my pull days. I, I like his idea. Yeah, no, you know, so here's the thing. You asked if you can make aesthetic progress without hammering your central nervous system. That's the only way you can make progress is without taxing this. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, if your CNS is fried, mm -hmm. which by the way, this is important, your CNS gets affected by much more than just exercise. Any stress will affect your central nervous system. So lack of sleep, a too restrictive diet, stress in your life. Crazy girlfriend. Mm, yeah, that'll mm. kill your CNS, uh, especially the crazy girlfriend part. Yeah. But but no, all, all joking aside, the only way you'll make progress is if the CNS is recovered and you feel good. So here's what I would do uh, with you if you were my client. First off, on your, your climbing days, I'm assuming you're doing a lot of volume, a lot of frequency, but not going to failure, which is a good thing, right? You're not treating it like a bodybuilding workout. You're practicing your climbing skill. So it's just lots and lots and lots of repetition and movement, which is good for what we're talking about. I think one day a week of resistance training, and I would focus entirely on three exercises or four exercises, uh, compound lifts. Um, here's the other thing to improve your climbing ability. I don't know how important it is for you to be a good rock climber. You might want to limit the amount of size you put on your legs. One thing you'll notice with really, really good rock climbers, they don't have huge legs, uh, huge legs, tend to be a detriment because obviously you have to pull that weight up. But aside from that, literally three or four exercises, compound lifts on you know one day a week, don't go to failure. You're doing the climbing. And then instead of trigger sessions, what will probably bring you more value is mobility. That, that, I think that'll help uh, the most. I would do shoulder mobility, wrist and hand mobility, because those areas tend to get hammered a lot with the climbing. Well, it makes the most sense for you climbing, right? But for aesthetics, I, the trigger did. I mean, I, I like your strategy. I mean, I think it's a it's a good place to start, and then there's nothing wrong with molding that as you go along. Like, let's say, for example, you're running the one foundational day, and then you're doing the six trigger days, and you find that the trigger days are actually impeding on your climbing skills, and then I then I would switch over to more mobility work, like Sal is saying, or maybe you split half mobility, half trigger days, and play with that a little bit. But I think overall, your strategy and the direction you're going with just one main foundational day with uh, you know scattered trigger or mobility days to replace the rest of your training. Because I mean, when you when you say aesthetics, aesthetics is a lot of times too just being lean, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily need to get much bigger. You'll be if you lean out, which you will do if you're you're rock climbing and you're eating eating healthy because you're exercising that much uh you'll you'll look good mm -hmm. you know so it's really about uh, how much muscle you want to allow yourself to build to not hinder your rock climbing yeah and one more thing if you know because i know you're doing a lot of pulling right so you may think that you're you, you want to avoid a compound back exercise uh for your lifting day i would definitely avoid any weighted pull down or pull up movements because you're doing that so much but don't neglect rowing. Uh, one of the imbalances that I've seen in my uh, in my experience with rock climbers 
is they get very, very strong lats, um, but sometimes they get forward shoulder because of the lack of rhomboid and mid-trapezius strength that matches it. So rows, really focusing on pulling the shoulder blades back, would help balance that out a little bit and maybe prevent shoulder problems that tend to plague uh, rock climbers. Okay, so stick to the big five for that foundation day and then mobility or trigger sessions the other six days. Um, I, have you guys ever talked about a trigger session for abs specifically? I haven't seen that uh, anywhere. It to- I mean, it, you can do it for any body part, but mm. if you want to do it for abs, I mean, I would go crunches, active planks. You could do rotation with uh, – with a band, you know, get some obliques, you know, some chops. I mean, really any exercise that's low to moderate intensity. Yeah, trigger sessions should be recuperative. So that's really where I would figure out like how many of these to structure in. If it is, you know, providing that 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 type of like rest recovery element to it. Uh, otherwise, I would then shift it a little bit more towards mobility uh, if it is impeding on that at all. But um, it, for for what you're describing, I think that it all sounds pretty pretty. Uh, it's a great place to start. Yeah, I think it sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, no, it's a great. I think it's a great strategy where to start. And then you just and I don't care how experienced all three of us are. I would still have to probably change this based off of the feedback you give me. So yeah. uh, I, I would be looking, I'd say, Hey, this is what we're going to start with this based off yeah. your goals. Would you tell me, I think you're going Tweak to and modify it as you go. That's right. Yeah. If I try to be greedy hypothetically, um, cause I used to be like a five day, six day a week kind of guy. If I try to bump two foundation days and just hold those ideally like, like an anabolic style, ideally you would space those out as much as possible. Correct. To yeah. Keep that signal loud. I would, but more isn't better. So keep that in mind. Just because you can do more and tolerate more does not mean you're going to get faster and better results. In fact, you might actually get slower results. So sometimes we confuse how much we can tolerate with ideal amount because there's a, like a bell curve, right? The, the right dose will give you the best results. You might be able to tolerate more, which is fine if you're trying to increase your work capacity and you know maybe stamina and that kind of stuff. But if you're looking for aesthetics... Uh, doing more is not going to get you better, uh, get you there faster. If if you were going to do that, this is what I would do. So before I went and like mirrored that first, so I'd have like the the foundational day first. Like well, your strategy is perfect, right? And then let's say you want to get greedy and you want to push a second. My second like quote unquote foundational day would look more like a focus session day. Totally. So I would pick more isolation exercises. Here's where things like the leg press and leg extensions and leg curl machines. Yeah. This is where they would have Rear a lot. Flies yeah, and, a lot yeah. of value here. So I would actually. You'd have your one big day, which is your compound lifting, which is going to be the deadlifts, the squats, the overhead press, bench press, rows. Those are the big movements you're going to do on that one day. And then if you're feeling good and you're like, oh, okay, let me try and add another day. Do like a pump day, right? Yeah, do more of like a focus type session from like aesthetic, which is more like your isolation exercises, machine exercises, and first see how that handles, your body handles that before trying to uh, emulate another uh, you know, compound lifting day like your, your first foundational day. Does that make sense? That, that makes a lot of sense. I, what I've been programming right now is I've been programming a Monday, Wednesday, uh, the big five, well, the big four, because uh, Sal's right, actually. I've been neglecting pull uh, mm-hmm. because by default, I'm technically hitting four climbing, uh, four pull days. So I was trying to push and leg on uh, my foundation day. So I'm glad Sal actually said that. I'll include that fifth, uh, I'll include the, the fifth big lift, uh, the pull movement. Awesome. So thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for calling, John. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. Have you guys ever worked with uh, rock climbers? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And I, I mean, obviously smart guy, and I think he's uh, on the right track. I mean, yeah. and again, uh, one person, this may be too much volume. Another person, they could handle uh, adding another day in there. It's, and we wouldn't know that until we start testing yeah, when our theory. In, it's, it's amazing when your intensity is moderate, the amount of volume you can eventually work up to is tremendous. But when your intensity is high, mm-hmm. boy, do you get uh, limited. But yeah, with rock climbers, what I would notice, the issues I would have to focus on were forward shoulder because yes. there'd be so many pull downs or pull ups, I should say. They get these really powerful lats and then they'd get, they'd kind of have this imbalance with the mid back. And so you see this forward shoulder quite a bit. And, you know, that's okay for rock climbing, but it's not when you start to notice shoulder problems or shoulder pain. 
So I would have them do stuff to kind of retract the scapula and then hand and wrist mobility because obviously they're using the hand so much. Oh yeah. Lots of mobility needs to be attached to that. It was interesting with rock climbers, like how strong, like how loud a signal they can get from their CNS oh, yeah. because it's so demanding on the body. People don't understand like how demanding that is, like all the way to your fingertips, uh, you know, in terms of like being able to shuttle, uh, you know, that, that type of recruitment and strength. So uh, I love rock climbers because they're, they're, they're easy to kind of mold into yes. a good strength uh, program. Yeah, their isometric strength was always it's, impressive. It's crazy.